Let's take a look at how to compute a running aggregation in ClickHouse. And what do I mean by running aggregation? Like, so for example, suppose you want to have a, a value in a materialized view that keeps a running average. So numbers are constantly being inserted into the source table. You want to grab those values and keep track of the average of that column. So here, for example, I'm, I want to keep track of the average price of a bunch of property prices grouped by town. Well, don't do this, by the way. If you're looking at this example, don't try this at home. This does not work, and I want you to understand why. Remember, the result of a materialized view is the result of a query. So you want the average price. Like, the business logic seems right, but it just doesn't work in ClickHouse this way. And it's important to understand why. When you define a materialized view, that materialized view has a source table. And when you insert rows into those source to into the source table, the same inserts, the same rows, get sent to the materialized view. But the materialized view never goes back to the source table and looks at the previous inserts. So for example, here I'm inserting two rows into the source table for the town London, a couple of prices. Well, that's easy enough to compute the average of two numbers. But then, what, a few seconds later, I insert three new rows. Well, how do I take the average now? I, I got to figure out that it's five numbers and I have to add them all up and divide by five. But I only have the three rows being inserted. Computing the average of those three rows doesn't do me any good. Now, there's a table engine for aggregations. It's called aggregating merge tree. And so we can do things like compute the average or the maximum or some type of aggregation in a materialized view. But it's a three-step process. And the first step is in your aggregating merge tree table, you define the columns that are going to keep the average. Or here I have two. I have an average and the maximum. And we have special data types for storing these types of special values. They're called aggregate function. And notice here, the average underscore price column is an average aggregate function. Now, you int 32. That's the data type of the values you're taking an average of. And then max price is a simple aggregate function. It's, it's an aggregate function, but it can be handled a little bit simpler because keeping a running maximum is easier for ClickHouse to do. And so step one is to define your aggregating merge tree and use these special aggregate function data types. And then in step two, when you define the materialized view, you can't just use average or max. You have to use the state function. And state works with any aggregate function. You can just append state. It's a combinator. It's called an aggregate function combinator. And again, maximum is easier. There's actually a simple state combinator that you can append for a handful of simple aggregate functions. That's things like max, min, and sum. But for what it's worth, you can just use state all the time if you want. But I kind of want you to see both examples. And so I'll work through both of these with an example here in just a minute. And then in step three, you're going to have to read these values. And to read these values, you're going to have to use its corresponding merge function if it's a state function that you use to define it. Now, if it's a simple aggregate function, you don't have to use merge. And again, I'm going to show you that right now. So I have this table called UK price paid. It's in the documentation. If you want the data set, you can download this or insert it into your tables, whatever. Um, and we can just look at some of the rows. It's a cool data set. It's got the, all the property sold from like 1995 till now. It gets updated pretty regular. And so you can see we got the price of the property and the address and the street and the town and so on over here. And so I'm gonna define a materialized view that keeps track of the average price per town in the United Kingdom. And so I'll start by creating a table. I'll, I'll do this in sort of the desired way. I'll create a destination table for my materialized view and I'll call it average by town. Now this is gonna be my aggregating merge tree table. And so I'll keep track of the town and I'll keep track of the average price. And because it's going to be an aggregating merge tree, the columns have to be aggregate function types. And so I'll do an aggregate function. Average is the function that's the aggregate function. And then uint32, well, that's the data type of that price column that I'm going to be taking the average of. And so this is going to be an aggregating merge tree. And the primary key is town. So this aggregating merge tree table is going to collapse on town. There's only going to be one row per unique value of town. Now that happens eventually. That happens during merges. And during those merges, the aggregate function is going to properly compute the actual average of all the values per town. So let's define the materialized view. And so I'll create Materialized view, I'll just call it 
average by town view and I'm going to send it to the average by town. That's why I define that table separately. And it's going to be an as, and I'm going to select the town. And then, you know, before when I was talking, I was saying, don't put average price here. That, that doesn't work. It's not average price. You have to use the corresponding state function. And then I'm gonna make sure that it maps to the proper column. The name of that column in the two table the destination table was average price. So you gotta make sure you use an alias there. And UK price paid is the source of this materialized view. I'm gonna group by town. That's consistent with the primary key of the destination table. So you have to group by town because that's the key of the destination table. So let's create the view. And it doesn't populate. We don't populate tables that way, typically with materialized views. And so what I'm gonna do is have to populate the materialized view now. So my insert statement is going to have to look very similar to my select statement. I'll have to use the state function again. So let me insert into the view and I'm going to select town and then average state of the price. And that's probably good, but I'll just put the alias here. Just in case I'll put UK price paid group by town and that's the entire data set. Let's see what happens. And it looks like I didn't allow for the low cardinality string. So we'll just fix this in real time. This won't take long to fix. I'll just make this a low cardinality and I'll change this to create or replace. There's nothing in these tables. So I'll just replace it quick and let's try the insert again and it looks like it's working there's about 28 million rows that shouldn't have taken too long and so now i have you know rows in my view if i select count from the destination table so average by town 1172 well that just happens to be if i do a unique exact on town from UK price paid, that's probably the exact number of unique towns. It is 1,172. Now, look what happens when I select star from average by town. Remember I said this was a three-step process and we've done two of the steps. We used aggregate function to define our table. We used average state to populate the table both in the view and when we populate it with our own query. When you select the values from the table, notice you get back this binary data, which really shouldn't surprise you that behind the scenes, ClickHouse is keeping track of more than one value. It has to keep track of a running total and the number of values if it wants to compute the average. And so if you do wanna select from here, we're gonna select the town, and then we're gonna use the corresponding merge function. So I'm gonna use average merge, of uh, what is that value called average price from average by town and let's see what happens when I do that oh I don't need to group what am I doing I can just run it like this ah well that's the average of all of them no I do want to group by town sorry average merge group by town we'll get the average of every single town so Rickman's worth, wherever that is in the United Kingdom, the average price is 402,895. Well, it's the United Kingdom, so it's not dollars, it's pounds and so on. And there we go. And so again, it's a bit of a tedious process, but it's very important to understand the three steps to define the aggregate function columns in your destination table, use the corresponding state function, and then use the merge function when it's time to read those values. Now I do want to show you one more thing and I'll just copy and paste it. I already have the, the code written for it. I'm going to show you what a simple aggregate function looks like. I'll do maximum price by town. So that's the max aggregate function. The values coming in are float 32s. And I better do the low cardinality trick since I learned that before. And so we'll create, this will be the destination table for my view. When you have a simple aggregate function, you can use simple state instead of state when defining that value. Oh, I'll need to insert them. 
And so I better copy that command from up above. I'll just copy this and paste it down below. Except instead of average state, I'm going to do max simple state. And it's not max price I, or average price. I called it max price. So that should work. And that did not work. What did I do wrong? Oh, average by town. It's max by town. Sorry, I picked the wrong table here. This should be my view. So I'm populating the view, which was the new one, max town by view. Uh, column has simple aggregate function, got type simple aggregate function max. Oh, float was the wrong one. Well, this is just fun to watch, isn't it? So we'll do uint32 and we'll create or replace this table like I did last time. Since it's empty, I can do that easily enough. And we'll try it one more time. Looks like I got it this time. Here's the payoff with simple state. So I, I used a simple aggregate function instead of aggregate function. I used simple state instead of state when I defined the view and when I populated it. Now when I do a select, I don't have to use the corresponding merge. Oh, sorry. This should be town, not district. Ah. There we go. So that's the maximum price of property paid in Rixman worth three. Well, that's a big number. That's probably like 38 million pounds. So, and there you go. So I used an example with aggregate function and simple aggregate function. And hopefully now you have a sense of how you can keep a running aggregation, like a running average or a running max or min or something like that using materialized views in the aggregating merge tree table engine.